my fusion screen again. So we are going to go over uh, making the linear rail bearing plate. So this is the plate that the actual linear rails, uh, the bearings actually mount to and then the ATC drive block mounts down here and at the top up here is where the uh, flag, the metal flag for the proximity sensor mounts. It's pretty straightforward as far as it's machining. It's got some pockets in the back all, and then uh, all these ho th hole, through holes for the screws that go into the bearings. Through hole here for the air cylinder mount and then there's a threaded hole here at the end but I'm not going to be able to thread this on the machine because the plate is physically too tall when, once it's clamped in the vise but I'm able to machine this pocket and drill it. So that's the downfall with the compression tapping head is the, the, the length is just too long so a thread mill would be much better suited for this area right here. So we'll just kind of go over real quick on what we got going here. Um, we're going to start with a facing. You're only taking like ten thousandths off and then bore. These are all for the socket head screws and through the through holes. Um, we're using a um, 3 16 uh, three flute end mill to do all these boring operations. Um, and then we got another boring operation which uses an eighth inch end mill and that's the through holes. I did not use a drill simply because of uh, the distance and uh, I was worried about hitting the vise or the uh, actual stops uh, and then we have a contour a roughing contour with a finishing uh, finishing pass on there to do the perimeter on the outside and when you watch the video you'll see that I actually uh, my depth here I misjudged this so it, I made my vice jaws a little bit shorter in height and you'll see that in the video I note it um, and then we follow up with a contour or excuse me a chamfer to chamfer all the holes and it uh, also chamfers uh, the outside so we go to the next operation we start with a simple facing operation to go ahead and clean off the residual material so I'm able to set my origin off of a rough corner and then do that from there so it gives me my facing and it was done in multiple passes. Uh, finally we have an adaptive it comes in spirals in and then clears out this pathway here and then we follow it up with contour for our finishing pass and then we have our bores these bores are for the socket heads for the M6 screws that go to the uh, drive plate and then we follow up again with a chamfer routine around the perimeters and then we have um, no, that was an extra uh, we have this right here I'm going to touch base because the vise was mounted down in this area here this way up here sticks up past the vise so when I did my uh, pocketing routine I did it in very very little um, steps to prevent chatter or, or for this plate from flexing because it's only one quarter inch thick here at its thinnest part so I didn't want to do too much and then we follow in with a drilling routine to drill that out for our uh, number 30 drill bit for the M4 screw alright so now this is up we'll run out the shop and go from there hey everybody welcome to the shop alright so today we're going to be machining the uh, rail bearing plate plate that mounts to the actual rail bearings themselves and is the mounting point for the uh, drive plate that we've previously machined in the uh, previous episode. So we got to machine this. This part's much larger. It's not the biggest, but it's much larger, but it's more simple. Anyways, I'm going to get this uh, camera set up and we'll uh, shoot some video while we're machining. All right, we are in and we're off. Do a little camera cleaning and get sprayed pretty good.
All right, that wraps this side up. So now we can get it all set up and do the other side. So I'll, uh, we'll come right back here in a second and we'll be ready to go on the other side. All right, we got the plate in, we got it uh, probed in place. So we're ready to machine the other side of it. So here we go. get to see all the stuff on the screen so I'm gonna have to clean up the camera so I'll go ahead and shut this off I need to uh, reprobe it back in because the, the next was done off of the actual stock so I need to reprobe it back in so and clean the screen so we'll be back in a second morning everybody uh, I didn't machine last night I got a little too late but when I took and found out that when I cammed it I didn't I cammed it to the hole, not the chamfer, so it didn't cut all the way through. So I just took it on the drill press real quick and punched out these couple of little spots. Um, I thought it might have been a little too much um, doing it with the chamfer. It probably would have been all right with the chamfer, but I might have might have pushed some burrs down inside the hole. So I'd had to chase it with a drill bit anyway. So I went ahead and did that, and I've also noticed that my surface finish. I don't know if it's the way I have my nozzle. <clears throat> or there's a uh, a bit that's going south but it, I don't think it's a bit because <clears throat> when it gets to the last third the surface finish looks much more improved so it's like it's got some scoring I can't feel it but there so I'm assuming it's remachining chips um, but when it got out here the chips are able to clear off faster and then the surface finish is uh, much more improved but so I'm going to have to look into that see what that is but anyways we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> we have to do a pocketing routine or basically an adaptive and cut a groove through here this is where the cylinder the air cylinder fits through and then chamfer all the rest of these holes oh and there's a uh, some boring functions um, down here I believe for the bolt holes for the uh, the drive plate to bolt onto so anyways We'll get this machined up and go from there. And here we go. Programs. I did an adaptive when I did this and I should have done a pocketing routine because then it would go through and clear on both sides pass it like a, a uh, like a surfacing routine but this hasn't been my part I don't know I'm hoping that my last ones are not going to be like this when this part's been kind of a pain in the butt uh, so anyways we'll get started on this one
Well, it looks like I gotta go do a finishing pass, so I gotta go fix that in the CAD, darn it. So we'll be back. All right, I, I went ahead and ran it. Uh, got my finishing pass on there. Basically, I ran the whole thing again. I just removed, I forgot to remove the uh, 20 thousandths extra left off. So I got that with all done. So at this point we need to, we got one more setup and then we have to machine this notch down here. So I have to turn the plate up and being it's gonna be really tall and then this thinned out section here, probably should have done this before I cut this. So I'm gonna have to cut, do some really light passes. Luckily it's only to clean out the, uh, the little radiuses in each of the corners here. And then it's got to be drilled and tapped for an M4 screw. This is for the uh, proximity sensor plate that'll mount onto here. So when this plate slides, it hits the proximity sensor. All right, we got the cam all loaded up. Um, we're going to be making a multitude of light passes on this, like 10 thousandths deep, simply because of the height that's protruding out of the vise. So, I'm worried about chatter. Hopefully it doesn't chatter with the 10 thousandths, but like I said, all we're doing is cutting this radius out of here. And then we're gonna do a drilling function. The plate's just too tall to run my uh, tapping head on here, so we're gonna have to hand tap this. This is where the advantage of uh, uh, thread mills would be uh, so much better. So anyways, we're gonna get started on this, so stand by. That was it. So we'll set this up and show you what it looks like. Alright, here we are. Here's the part. As I noted before, the surface finish looks terrible, but I really think it's chip evacuation is the problem because I can see little hit and misses of items um, in there. So I'll have to mess around with the coolant a little bit, see what's what's going on with the chip evacuation. And basically I see the same thing over on this side. So I think it's just chip evacuation is the problem. Um, all in all, the part came out all right. Um, it's, I don't know, this pretty, I guess if you get parts every once in a while, that's just not working for you. This part was it for me. It was just, uh, it was like one thing after another. Um, with little things but all in all the part is highly usable um, it did come out pretty good other than the fact of the surface finish from the face mill um, I don't feel anything other than that so anyways we're gonna chalk this up and we'll see what next part we're gonna make stand by all right these are the two little simple parts these are the proximity sensor mounts that mount this one would be the uh, one for the in and out of the air cylinder pushing the ATC in place and this one is for the rotation of the carousel. So we decided to block it up into as one piece so it would be easier to put it in the vise once the top surface had been, top section had been completed. So we do a light surfacing profile and then we do an adaptive that brings us down to the step, first step. So these are done in uh, uh, two step downs, uh, 3 8 end mill, and then polish this front section off. Also, again with the 3 8 end mill, and then we do the bottom section here, and it's an adaptive with the 3 8 end mill, and then we do our contours and contour again, and two bores. This would be for the actual 8 millimeter hole for the sensor mount or the sensor itself and then a deep drilling. I went all the way through and that's for the M4 screw that's going to mount this to the drive plate. And we follow up with a chamfer and then we surface this whole section with a 10, mil, with a 10 thousandths uh, finishing pass because it's going to be pretty thin. I didn't want to overload those two little pieces being clamped in the vise so it was done really low. Um, and then we have our uh, boring routine. This is the counter bore for the head of the screw, the M4 screw. And then chamfers all the way around on that edge. And then on this particular item, 
this one's not machined, so let me go ahead and turn that one off. So it's reset up in the vise as this orientation. And then we do a pocket or a bore for the uh, screw head right there. And then finish it up with the drilling cycle. And then that completes this part. I couldn't do the chamfer because I don't have a small enough chamfer to cut this in here. So we left it as such. So let's go on out the shop see what we got. Hey everybody, all right, so we have our next project. It's the sensor mounts. Um, I decided to machine both of them at the same time. Um, it'll make it easier so when I flip it over in the vise, I have four points holding all the, because the, they're pretty small parts. So I'm hoping I can get away with this without having to make a fixture. Anyways, I have a piece of one by one uh, bar stock and already loaded up and zeroed out. So we're gonna go ahead and get this machine. I'm probably not gonna record this. I'm just gonna do it in segments on it, trying to keep this video at a, a normal length. So anyways, we'll come back here in a second. There they are, all nice and fresh. This is step one, uh, the top portion. So basically now we have to roll it over, surface it, um, and do uh, some chamfer routines on there. And then we can, uh, after that, then we'll break it down into individual parts. Well, actually for this part, it's got a pocket on the bottom side this one's through hole but there's a pocket on this side so once we get it surfaced and pocketed for this one then uh, we'll be able to do the separate one on that side there all right voila uh, the second half is done um, what I did is I did a surface first and then I come in and probed this hole as my origin and then did this bore and then chamfered everything so now we got to take this out. This part is done. This one has another option, a function that we have to do. So we'll get this one set up and machine next. We'll... All right, we got them all done. These are by far the smallest parts to date. Uh, these are for the proximity sensors to mount on, and then they mount to the actual one is for the rotation. If you remember in the earlier episode, there was a uh, a notch cut in the bottom of it and that's for this to sit up in there and then there's a hole drilled through it to pass the wire so the proximity sensor for the rotation and then this one is to be mounted on the back of the rail bearing plate and mount the next proximity sensor in there for the flag to go over right there so this is the parts they came out really nice and voila so anyways that's it for this episode Please like and subscribe and we'll work on the next project. Thanks.